Hey, what's up, Visionaries? Welcome back to the Arc Vision Fam Jam. My name is Anton, and hopefully all of you guys are having a fantastic day because today's song, Supporter Squad, song request comes from Russ, and this is Savage Garden to the moon and back. And before we get into this one, I do want to say you guys rock. Thank you for all the love. Also, if you guys want to support the channel at the same time, request songs, albums, and get exclusive access to full album reactions and a whole bunch of other stuff, definitely join everybody in the supporter squad for the price of a large pizza. And um, that's what funds the entire channel. So if you want to help keep this thing alive and growing and get really cool things, Definitely do that. Also, if you guys want to uh, reach out to myself and everybody else, um, we're on Discord. So find us there. Link down below is for free. Also, link down below to my podcast and to official merch if you're interested. And that's it. So let's get into Savage Garden to the moon and back. Was not expecting an instrumental like this. This is spacey. Like a sci-fi soundtrack. Even the visuals. Was not expecting this. This is amazing. To justify all the hurt inside. Guess she knows from the smiles and the look in their eyes. Everyone's got a theory about the beautiful one. They're saying, Mama never loved her much, and Dad never keeps in touch. How have I never heard these guys? Like, legitimately, the instrumental in the song is masterful, and his voice is so cool like he kind of reminds me of like a rob thomas of matchbox 20 not in style not even in sound but in just like uniqueness in embodiment and like richness there's so much to his voice and it's so again he's another guy he's just effortless with the melodies silky smooth able to just put in so much emotion feeling into so little of a a vocal line but anyway let's get back into this i'm Let's do it. <laughs> Mama never loved her much, and Dad never keeps in touch. That's why she shies away from human affection. But somewhere in a private place, she packs a bag for outer space. And now she's waiting for the right kind of pilot to come. And she say to me, she say to Why 
That is hands down the that might be the biggest surprise I've had on the channel so far. This song absolutely floored me, blew me away. This is oh man, this was an absolute freaking masterpiece. Like. I think my two favorite 90s artists, my top three, I think so far, are Ma Matchbox 20 Savage Garden and Goo Goo Dolls. There's something about the sensitivity and the. There's such a depth to these artists, such a depth to their lyricism, to their poetry, to everything about them. You hear Lola? We just, uh, I think my dad just got home. Um, but anyway, yeah, so it's like. Man, there's so I find like I was talking about this with James, but the nineties are so human. There's so there's so much depth and richness in the nineties in a way that I feel like the eighties was about ideas. It was about the idea of love. It was about the over the top nature. It was it was about big questions and big dramatic flourishes of emotion where the 90s was a lot more subdued the 90s was a lot more intimate it was it was rather than the 80s projecting everything outwards the 90s was about bringing everything in it was about assimilating everything asking some deeper questions it was a lot more intimate about human psychology and love like a lot there was a lot of 80s songs that were about love but more about the idea of love the 90s was about the experience of love it was about the traumas of love it was about trauma pain heartbreak it was about feeling those things so fully and not oh, like making them bigger it, it wasn't about um hyperbole it wasn't about hyperbolizing these things it was about feeling the weight of them it wasn't glossing over emotion it was basking in the darkness of it you know nirvana Alan alanis morissette right like the 90s was a very powerful healing transformative time for music in my opinion and and i feel like like we're really dark right now our music is very apathetic it's very hopeless it's very in some respect it has some similarities to the 90s but nowhere near the depth nowhere nowhere near the acceptance the questioning there's no questions in modern music anymore all this stuff was questions it was about questioning you know what is it to be a human being what does pain mean? What? How do we survive? It was dark and sometimes at times suicidal, and and you know l heavily laced with depression, but but it was it was about experiencing that and asking those questions rather than now it's just about pushing everything away in some sense. Man, this song absolutely floored me. I, I think this is an absolute masterpiece. I was, first of all, not expecting that voice. I was not expecting that instrumental. That instrumental was so intricate and so beautiful and so atmospheric and dynamic and dramatic. And the classical guitar solo and just the guitar playing, just, this was masterful. I was not expecting this level of musicianship. 
Um, cause a lot of the time for me, what I've experienced with the nineties is, um, in some respects it's, it's relatively simplistic. There, it was very textured a lot of the time, but it was relatively simplistic where this was, there was a lot, this was very dynamic. There was a lot going on in this and man, it just, yeah, the lyrics about, yeah, this, this woman, this, you know, woman, this girlfriend who's kind of, you know, never felt love kind of reminds me of Matchbox 20's push. Uh, the girl that, that Rob was explaining in that song, this very broken and beaten woman who's just lost all faith and doesn't know how to trust and love anymore. And, um, yeah, I've been there. I, you know, I think a lot of us have. A lot of us probably listening to this song have because that's why we're drawn to this kind of music because we have a lot of, we've come from a lot of trauma and hurt as well. And hopefully we've all kind of, on our journeys, got to a place where we, where we know where we came from. We know what's broken us in the past, but hopefully we've healed a lot of it and are just trying not even trying to help people, but we naturally help people because that's our community. That's our, that's the meaning of life to us. When you're, when you've been broken, when you've been beaten down and when your whole idea of self-confidence and self-expression has been shattered and you don't even know how to express yourself and you rebuild that, the only thing meaningful in life is helping people regain that in themselves. You know, this is why I'm drawn to psychology so much because I was so broken and like why I'm so into self-expression because I didn't know how to express myself. I didn't have the confidence to even say an opinion. Like when I was in high school and stuff, I was super shy, I barely talked at all. And so it's like, you know, the human psyche is fascinating to me, how broken we can get and how meaningful it is in, in coming out the other side of that and being there for people and and I think, you know, it creates a lot of dreamers out of us, I think, in some sense, being broken down and stuff. Um, it, and it forces you to ask bigger questions of life, I think, of relationships, of your own life, if you can get through it, you know, because in, in the other way, it, it if, if you haven't progressed through your own pain yet, it's crippling. I, yeah, I know what that's like. It's just brutal. And then life just opens up for you. It becomes this like palette of colors and textures and vibrancies, you know? What was the line? If love is red, then she was colorblind. Yeah, when you're broken, you're colorblind. You can't see the vibrancy of life. You can't see the beauty in anything. Everything is just muted colors. Everything is just gray, grayed out, washed out. But it's like, yeah, when you when you're there, you don't take human connection for granted. You don't you don't take good people for granted. You hold on to your relationships with the people that mean something to you. But anyway, man, this was an absolute masterpiece. Wow. Anyway, what are your top three favorite Savage Garden songs? Just everything about this band, the, the vocalists, the music, just impeccable. Absolutely impeccable. Yeah, what are your top three favorite Savage Garden songs? Let me know down below. Also, if you guys enjoyed the video, definitely smash the like button and leave a simple, profound, or silly comment, whatever you want. Just helps with the YouTube algorithm. And uh, that's it. So I'll see all of you guys again tomorrow. I love you. Peace.